question we have here is which of the following hormones does not have a role in fetal growth? The options we have are insulin, growth hormone, thyroxin and glucocorticoid. The key points here is fetal growth. We know that postnatally growth hormone has an important role. But in the fetal life, the important hormones include insulin, thyroxin and glucocorticoid is responsible for the maturation of various organs like lung, liver, right? So here the correct option is going to be option B that is growth hormone. Growth hormone has little to no role in fetal growth, right? Though there may be levels, high amounts of uh, growth hormone detected in the fetal life, but they have no role in the fetal growth. So the answer here is going to be growth hormone does not play a role in fetal growth. The important hormones include insulin, thyroxin, as well as glucocorticoids. So this is the answer to this question. We know that insulin and thyroxin are important for the development of the fetus and glucocorticoid is important for the maturation of various organs. Whereas growth hormone, although present in high amounts during fetal life, has no role. It has a role only after birth, only postnatally in the growth of the baby. So coming to the next question. The next question is regarding the eruption of teeth. The question says, which of the following statements regarding the eruption of teeth is false? You have to choose the false statements. So let us go one by one at each of these statements. The first statement is, the first primary tooth to erupt is lower central incisor. We know it is a true statement. The second statement is, all primary teeth erupt earlier in the lower jaw than their counterparts in the upper jaw. This is a false statement. The first primary tooth to appear is the lower central incisors. But rest all primary tooth, upper jaw, upper jaw teeth appear earlier as compared to their lower jaw counterparts. So for primary tooth eruption, all of the primary teeth will erupt in the upper jaw earlier than their lower jaw counterparts. The exception to this is lower central incisors that are the first primary tooth to appear. Okay, so this is the false statement. The next statement is the first secondary tooth to erupt is the first molar, which is the true statement. The next statement is no teeth till 12 months of age is called delayed eruption which is a false statement. We know that no teeth at 13 months of age. 13 months of age is delayed eruption. So this is a false statement. The next statement is teething manifestations include drooling of saliva, sucking of fingers and gingival hyperemia. This is again a correct statement. So we have two false statements here, two and four. So the answer here is going to be B. 2 and 4, right? So this is the answer to this question. We all know about the eruption sequence of the lower jaw as well as the upper jaw. The first secondary tooth is the molar. First molar is could be mandibular or maxillary. No dentition at 13 months of age is known as delayed dentition. And lastly, all these first molar, that is the first secondary tooth, they usually appear at 6 to 7 years of the age. Now coming to the next question. The next question says that we have a three-year-old boy that presented to our OPD for mixed vaccination. His routine anthropometric measurements are noted during this visit. He is noted to be 90 cm tall and his lower segment is 45 cm. What is the most likely diagnosis here? The options are this child is normal, congenital hypothyroidism, rickets and spondyloepiphyseal dysplasia. So firstly, let's look down at the concept of upper segment, lower segment ratio. We all know if I have this child here, upper segment is defined as the top of the head till the pubic symphysis. 
this is the upper segment and lower segment is calculated by subtracting this upper segment from the entire height of the child. And this upper segment lower segment ratio changes uh, with age, right? As the child grows, the limbs grow and thus this ratio is going to decrease, right? What are the normal values of this ratio? The normal value of this ratio is 1.7 at birth, 1.3 at 3 years, it is 1 after 7 years of age and 0.9 in adults. Here we know that the, the lower segment is given to be as 45 centimeter. So the upper segment is going to be 90 minus 45. That is again 45 centimeter. So here the upper segment lower segment ratio is essentially 1. And this child is 3 year old. I know that in a 3 year old child this ratio should be 1. This At 3 years, at 3 years, the ratio should be 1.3 but here the ratio is 1. What that indicates? It indicates that the upper segment lower segment ratio here is less. Is less for age. That means the upper segment is shorter required for that age. That means some spinal abnormality could be there. Some storage diseases like MPS pot spine right again affection of the spine so here definitely the answer is going to be spondyloepiphyseal dysplasia this child is definitely not normal because the upper segment lower segment ratio should be 1.3 at this age in rickets and congenital hypothyroidism the main skeletal part that is affected is the limbs there's bowing of legs right so the lower segment ratio would be shortened that means the upper segment lower segment ratio would be high in these two cases so again b and c options are excluded so the answer here is going to be d that is spondyloepiphyseal dysplasia coming to the next question the next question says that there is an under 15 player and he is expected to verify his age before the game which x-ray would you like to order to know that he is appropriate to play under 14? The options we have here are x-ray hip, x-ray wrist and hands, x-ray elbow and hip and lastly x-ray shoulder. The answer here is going to be x-ray elbow and hip. This is based on the concept of bone age. Right, depending on the number of ossification centers and the fusion of ossification centers, we can use various atlases, Coolidge pile atlas, or we can use Bone Expert app to assess the bone age. Right, and we have to order x ray first to know that the most common x ray that is ordered includes x ray hip, x ray wrist and hands, elbow, and shoulder. Depending on the age, we order different different type of x-rays. If the child is in between 3 to 9 months, we would order x-ray shoulder. 1 to 13 years, wrist and hands. And 12 to 14 years, elbow and hip. You can notice that there is an overlap in between 12 to 14 years. You can order wrist and hands and elbow and hip as well. But it is safer to choose elbow and hip in this case. Right? So, for an under 14 player, you will order an x-ray elbow and hip. For a smaller child, 3 to 9 months, you will order x-ray shoulder. And in between 1 to 13 years, you will order wrist and hands. Coming to the next question. The next question says, which of the following statements is true? Again, a true-false question. Let's read one by one these statements. The first statement says the head reaches 90% of the adult size at one year of age. This is a false statement. We know that 90% of the adult size is reached around two to two and a half years of age, right? So this is a false statement. Next statement says that lymphoid growth follows a sigmoid shape pattern. This is again a false statement. 
because we know that lymphoid growth scammon curve is something like this with a peak in between 4 to 8 years of age. This is not sigmoid. Sigmoid shape curve is seen for somatic growth, right? S for somatic, S for sigmoid. So this is again a false statement. Next statement is perinatal period is between 28 weeks of gestation to 7 days after birth. This is again a false statement. Perinatal period is between 22 weeks to 7 days post birth. The last statement is that the growth of the child is cephalocaudal and distal to proximal, which is the true statement and hence the correct answer here. The need of this question, the value of this question here is that you should know the basics also because sometimes a lot of statement based questions are thrown at you and you should be very well versed with the basics to mark them correct. Subtle differences and confusion at the last moment can, uh, can hamper your score. So definitely go through the basics before going to your exam.